What's up, people? Today we're going to go over basic gear setup, uh, layout, uh, and the kind of thought process and planning, pre-mission planning you want to be doing when you're actually setting up your gear, uh, the kind of equipment checks you want to do, and uh, let's just get into it. So, first thing I generally do, given the current state of the game and the crashes and stuff that you can have, you don't have to do this, especially if you don't have a larger stash capacity. If you're running one of the more basic packages in game, obviously you're going to have a lot. You're going to be more limited in what you're able to do in terms of stash storage. So just keep that in mind. But generally, if I can, uh, I like to uh, strip anything that I normally, if I have a normal set of kit that I'm running currently, then that's going to get stripped out left uh, in your stash. Uh, there's a lot of guys that like to just buy a bunch, especially upper tier guys that have all the uh, level 3 vendors and stuff. They like to preload a bunch of gear and all that stuff. You can do that if you have the gear, if you have the stash space and also obviously the, the coin for it. Um, but one thing at a time, of course, uh, get there first. You know, there's no point, especially if you're in tier one or anything like that uh, level one vendors and stuff there's not really too much of a point in shelling out a bunch of cash building uh, something like that when you're just gonna get better stuff later anyway but uh, it's not a bad idea if you've got limited stash space to just uh, preload everything you can and especially uh if you have enough stash space we got a couple extra bags a lot of people like to just use those bags as extra storage and then you just chuck a bunch of stuff in there and everything but uh, uh that's generally what a lot of people like to do in this case i just leave enough space to make sure that i can strip my current loadout off if i want to change anything up i can do that but that's what uh that's uh, one of the options so uh, first thing, uh, what you're going to do is we got to think first about uh, the area in which you're going to be going into next, what the mission is, all that kind of stuff. You know, if you go into a starter location, say, for example, uh, if you're Lemang, for example, whatever, you go Falang, any one of the key, Vongsa, freaking uh, Namthaven, um, any of the starting towns. Obviously, soft point, you know, ammo and that kind of stuff is acceptable, and you could skimp on your armor or whatever, but... If you're going anywhere else, you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna pony up, and and and, and even uh, starting town, you know, there are rifle caliber weapons being deployed in there, so more armor isn't a bad thing. Generally speaking, more armor is never a bad thing unless it really slows you down. So, uh, when it comes to gear, then we're just gonna start from the we can go uh, head to t uh, toe on this one. Um, obviously, you're gonna take whatever gear you've got, helmet-wise, headgear. Um, it's going to be a question of armor, obviously, durability, and weight. Those are your three options, right? Uh, in the case of 3A, and, and, and I can go over, and I know a lot of people already have gone over this, but, you know, you've got your different armor ratings and stuff. Uh, I'm not going to go over that right now, but obviously that's something to consider. Certain levels of durability, obviously once it gets down to a certain point, that's not really worth the weight or the risk anymore. Sell it or get rid of it, um, but uh, that's just something to consider. Just take a quick look at that. Okay, cool. Got my headgear on. If you have any iframes that actually have flash protection, that's a thing. Um, generally, that's only going to matter if you're dealing with uh, any kind of uh, grenades, flashbags, etc. But it is an option, and it doesn't weigh much, so that's a thing as well. Um, hearing protection, which does audibly change uh, your ability to perceive the area around you, definitely going to be useful in listening for enemies and such. Uh, if you're dealing with uh, the razors, generally are going to be good enough all the time the only advantage from uh, higher tier ones that I've seen so far for the most part is weight differences in the case of uh, say for example the razors and the uh, quads uh, the only difference has been uh, weight uh, no not really a discernible audio difference but anyway um, 
there's no real reason not to run without them unless you're I don't know you want to play on hardcore or something mm -hmm. like that I have seen some people who will use the cheap earmuffs from the uh, AI to mm -hmm. actually dampen their hearing like when they're on the helicopter I would recommend against using those mm -hmm. simply because if you do end up in a, uh, a if you do end up doing um, actual PvP uh, allies might accidentally shoot you because you look like an AI with those yellow earmuffs on. Plus, again, they make generally make it worse, not better. But anyway, uh, yeah, use use using use the, use the uh, electronic ear pro. There's no real reason not to. Um, okay, armor and or chest rig. Uh, chest rig. I mean, for most part, chest rigs have only real advantage. I mean, there's two advantages. Generally speaking, they have far greater c container size and less weight, but they generally are completely unarmored, unless you're getting, say, for example, the uh, Elite Four, for example, is more or less, it's, it's a plate carrier, but only has front armor on it, so it's going to be generally lighter, higher container size, etc. But again, for the most part, uh, I would recommend actual armor. Uh, so there's again there's the the only time the weight really comes into play, and we're, I'm going to talk about that later, is how much you can carry and how much energy and fluids you burn through in order to carry that much. So um, that's going to be a consideration. Uh, in this case, we're talking about this armor here. Again, it's got the slots that it's got. Uh, I generally run no more than four mags in total, three on the body, one on the gun. Uh, after that, it starts to take up more space than it's worth. Uh, when I get to the bag, uh, I'll go over a little more of that. Um, if you have enough space, you can leave space in, the, uh, in that vest for extra items or other, but mainly, what you want to be utilizing your armor space for, and in this case I'll add in the belt real quick, is for your quit slots. In this case specifically, uh, your magazines, your loaded magazines, and your medical. Obviously when you're doing your armor, make sure you're confirming that you've got your uh, uh, front, back, side plates, whatever the armor level, durability, and container size, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we're going to go ahead and crack open our medical real quick since we're talking about this, because this is kind of a, a wheelhouse for me. Um, there's no real functional benefit to rocking, to not rocking uh, MFACs or IFACs or QR kits or the EMT or any of those because of how much space they take up versus how much uh, you can stuff into them. Um, so yes, even if you're starting out in vendor uh, vendor uh, level one and you can only afford the MFACs and, and even those are not cheap, they're about 200-ish a piece easy. Uh, they're going to give you a lot of advantage in the field. Obviously, you can also fill your pockets with medical, individual medical items if you can't afford it, or you don't have the chest rig space or the plate space or whatever. But uh, between the use of the M facts and all that stuff, there's not really a reason you should necessarily have to utilize those. Maybe you could check a, a single a single M fact in there if you're running tight on space or whatever. But I generally actually reserve the uh, the um, pocket space for uh, single use, single single space uh, food items uh, because you're gonna need that space for those regardless uh, so you might as well uh, leave those for your loose food items and use your other dedicated slots for your medical and your magazines uh, in the case of medical uh, you'll notice that there's plenty especially when you start getting to the higher tiers like the, the QR kits you're just gonna start to get an excessive amount of space which does give you some advantages in the fact that it will allow you to utilize, uh, actually utilize the half-used, partially used uh, medical uh, consumables. Uh, because you can't, 
at least as far as I know, you can't combine half used items because that's essentially the idea is that that single item has so many uses, not that there are like, you know, you've got five tourniquet, you've got a five out of five tourniquet doesn't mean that there's five tourniquets. It means that that tourniquet has five uses, right? So it's singular items with uses to them, longevity, etc. So that's the reason why that they're like that but this also means that you know again if i have this much space i can maximize that i cannot i can use what items i have partial items i have and still have enough to get through whatever mission i have and of course again and i talk about this a lot i've mentioned it in my previous uh vids um the free medical that you get off of bodies and 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 loot and such is going to be a significant uh financial savings but it's also going to be maybe not a significant financial saving but it is a financial saving and it is also something that you can essentially it, it's going to prevent you're not going to have to waste money or time or or whatever buying stuff and, and cycling through that when you can literally just find that stuff out in the field for free. Now, some are going to be less worth your time than others. Um, mostly for the for that purpose, I would say the uh, street meds, the eyeball in and such, not as valuable per se, simply because of uh, how often you actually use pain meds. It depends. Um, the base splints... Uh, are fine um, again it also depends on how often you have to use certain things it's got to be situationally dependent um, but that is an option um, it depends entirely on uh, I've seen some people say that they use one thing a lot and another item not so much mm -hmm. often it, it's going to depend on basically your your play style and, and a lot of your luck when it comes to being shot or injured by the AI. Uh, I've yet to ever actually really truly use blood bags of any kind, uh, small ones or the large ones, uh, mainly because the way the health system works, you're either going to need a lot of blood or you're, you're either going to, it's one of three things, either you're going to need a lot of blood because you just got messed up really hard. You're not going to need a lot of blood, and your uh, the uh, regeneration's going to kick in once you get your hydration, your energy, and everything taken care of. <coughs> and at that point, you're not going to need the blood, or you'll be dead, or in a pretty much. The coma situations generally is when you're going to need the blood uh, blood uh, replenishment afterwards. Um, like I said, I've rarely, if ever, had to use blood, so. You don't necessarily need to bring a lot of it with you. Keep in mind, of course, you're not going to really find it in the field much either. So if you want to hedge your bets and bring a little extra, you can do that. Just keep in mind the space and the likelihood of what you're going to use versus what you're not going to use. The things you use the most, tourniquets to a degree. Um, don't just default to seeing the blood symbol pop up and then press your tourniquet. Because if it's a small blood symbol, like a single drop, it's a slow bleed, and it's a, a relatively small bleed that very often has a tendency to stop on its own. Um, you can default to stopping it with a tourniquet if you would like, but generally you're not going to need to, per se, if it's a slow bleed. Again, it depends on your situation, what your blood levels are at to begin with that's going to be your call uh, based on uh, how exigent your circumstances are, how close the, how danger close the enemy is, security, etc. Um, the bandages slash gauze, that's probably the thing, that, no, that is the thing you're going to use, that is the thing you're going to use the most. Um, it's lucky that you find so much gauze and stuff in the field because that's pretty much, you're just going to be button mashing that a lot because Almost every single injury you're going to get, every single one of those markers, for the most part, unless it's like, if it's listed as a bruise, for example, obviously you don't need to, you don't necessarily need to do anything with that. You can, you can treat it, 
or you can let it go, use pain meds or whatever. The bruises have a tendency to basically go away on their own, and they just basically cause you to uh, have pain symptoms. But if it's a, a any kind of light wound, medium wound, whatever, you're gonna need to you're gonna need to utilize the uh, the gauze bandages, etc., for that. And uh, so that is. Uh, that's going to be your mainstay. So having those extra slots open to utilize the gauze or half-used uh, half-used bandages or whatever is definitely going to be uh, what you're going to be running the most. And uh, given that those are best utilized in a quick slot, considering that they take the they're one of the the second longest to apply next to the sutures, uh, you're going to want a lot of slots for those splints. Not often. Um, do yourself a favor and don't try jumping off of any 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 significant any kind of significant uh, uh, incline whatsoever, especially if you have a lot of weight in your in your gear. I've gone off of relatively minor inclines and busted both legs, so just keep that in mind. For those of you that have been trying to get into that one particular building in Banpa, you know what I'm talking about. Because two legs, that's two uses on a splint right there. You can burn through splints really quickly if you're engaged in something that's going to cause that to be a consistent problem. It will, uh, the leg injuries will slow you down for sure. Uh, they cut into your stamina quite a bit. So having splints, yes. But unless you're engaged in specific activity, not likely that you're going to use it. Uh, tourniquets, again, don't waste them if you don't have to. There are tourniquets available that you'll find on bodies, but they're single use, so they take up a whole slot, so just keep that in mind. They are free, they are available, but if you have the space, go ahead and grab them, but if not, just keep that in mind. Again, space is, a, is, is a, at a premium. Uh, and the suture kits, uh, you will need those. You'll probably need. It, it truly, it truly depends on how long you're going to be out in the field. But uh, the lungs, in particular, seem to be very prone to uh, getting injured, and uh, that's not going to. You're, you're going to get the coughing symptom, and that's not going to go away unless you suture that. So keep in mind. Uh, that that those are more likely to be used than not when it comes to that kind of stuff or or you'll have uh you know uh liver damage or whatever or whatever mm -hmm. for the most part the uh suture a injury i've seen has been lungs but so you will need those uh definitely always have those on you regardless and like i said the pain meds literally only exist to mask the pain they don't really heal anything the only reason you're going to take that is if you just don't want to waste the gear on healing some uh some injury or it's imperative that you shut up so keep in mind those are situational like that and that pretty much covers the medical so my layout like i said i've got pretty much as much space as I can to allow for maximum medical usage. At a certain point, you will start having, I guess you could say, too much or more than enough, but just keep that in mind. The one other benefit of having so many medical uh, slots available in your quick slots is that they will not be taking up any storage space in your bag, which is where we're going to go to next uh bag so you can save a lot of time and energy by storing everything that you had both in your gear pockets and everything that you're going to carry with you anyway in there so that you don't have to go shuffling and reloading everything as you go in the case of the bag obviously you want to have everything that you might need in there but at the same time you need space you have to have space in order to uh carry anything you might loot out of there and you don't want to start the mission off overloaded in weight because that's going to that's going to basically cut into the short version of that is it's going to cut into your efficiency one it's going to affect your loot two it's going to uh, increase your weight to start and what weight equates to is 
your ability to uh, maneuver rapidly is going to cut into your stamina, but it's also going to affect your hydration and energy levels. Essentially, because you're burning more stamina and you're carrying more weight, it takes more effort to do things. Therefore, you're going to burn through your hydration and energy levels faster, meaning that you need to bring more energy, more food, and more fluids to sustain you. Now, there will be, in fact, that's the most, pretty much the most common thing to encounter pretty much is AI or loot. You will find food items just sitting around, fluid items sitting around. But again, you can't always count on that to be there. Far from it. So you need to make sure that you're bringing a sustainable amount of supply in terms of hydration and energy when you pack up. Now here's the real technical thing that you have to consider is what is the burn rate, the usage rate on activity? This is literal like, you know, dietitian nutrition stuff level here, right? In real life, unfortunately the game doesn't do it this way, but in real life you calculate calorie usage and, and, and how much water it takes to go X amount of distance going so fast and all that kind of stuff. So when you get into the game, it'll be up to you to figure out, okay, based on X amount of weight, I go out, I put this stuff in my bag, I have this approximately this average amount of weight on my, uh, on my character when I start on my body, when I start a mission and how long does that mission last and how many things did I end up burning through so that you can calculate, man, mas o menos, I'm going to need... X amount of fluid uh, charge and X amount of energy charge to get through that mission. So then you can make that say, make that calculations in your head and say, hey, I'm only going to need so much fluid here and so much now. And then that'll say, hey, I can cut down on this and gamble on how much I want to bring and how much I don't want to bring. And that's something you're going to have to figure out for yourself because that's uh, a little bit more of a intense process for you to figure that out. Uh, when it comes to uh, ammunition, obviously, like I said, four magazines. I'll go ahead and load up the weapon here. Uh, that's uh, four magazines, three in the body, one in the gun. But then carry a sizable chunk of loose ammunition uh, in your bag. Uh, depending on how long you're planning on being out there, what kind of mission objectives. Yeah, two stacks probably is a good idea, especially given how durable the AI can be at times sometimes you'll find yourself melting a whole magazine to take out one guy and that'll go relatively mm -hmm. quickly in this case you've got 4 to the 30 maso menos I have the Daniel Defense magazines but 4 to the 30 that's 120 plus uh, 2 more 60s that's another 120 so you know what 240 uh, in real life uh four magazines is a recon load so to speak but uh combat load is six is uh six on the body one of the guns so seven uh so just keep that in mind 210 is a 210 maso menos is a combat load right so in theory 240 would be enough but you gotta you gotta learn how to budget know what your tendencies are personally for uh, how much ammo you're unloading etc so it's it goes without saying it's probably best if you conserve your ammo go for headshots especially you got that uh, that uh, silenced suppressed weapon system set up that's what you want to be going for so keep that in mind in this case like I said I've got X amount of food items and fluids Plus, especially the ones in the pockets, which I utilize rather frequently, and that's what uh, that's what you're going to be doing. Uh, any other loose items in your uh, secure container? For the most part, the only thing I ha I'm going to have in there to start is going to be a key fob, so that I can load up those keys. Because uh, especially when you get to the higher tier, um, higher tier uh, missions you're going to find that those keys are practically impossible to find, so you're going to want to be able to store those if you find them uh, ASAP in your secure container so that you do not take a walk. You will notice that I have sacrificed my secondary, uh, so my hand, uh, my handgun slot, 
in order to utilize the belt for more quick slots I generally only bring one weapon with uh, and focus on utilizing that plus ammunition if you are placing yourself in a position if you're running solo especially and you're placing yourself in a position where you're getting close and just burning through ammo at close range that's the point where you're gonna need a pistol to begin with uh, I would recommend you readjust your tactics uh, to fit your capabilities uh, especially given the fact that at least as of now pistol rounds seem to be subpar in performance uh, you're essentially wasting precious space and adding uh, extra ammo uh, requirements on a weapon that's really not serving you all that well uh, if you do need another weapon or you're running low on ammo it would be best at that point to sustain off of the loot and or AI weapons you find uh, no doubt at that point that's going to solve your ammunition problem as a matter of fact when you are still starting out and you haven't gotten to gunny level 2 it is wise to focus on AK 762 by 39 related builds because of the ammunition the ammunition sustainment that you can, uh, can, can get off of that um, but obviously after that I would recommend and as far as the game is concerned at this point in time uh, going for an M4 Mark 18 etc style approach in terms of your weapon uh, uh, your weapon selection uh, yep other than that uh, pockets usually are like I said generally used for quick use food items and such that will sustain me in fact I sometimes rarely if ever touch my heavier uh, food items because of all the loose stuff I find but just keep all of that in mind and lastly so the weapon itself you have to consider what mission you're going in on but odds are range is always going to be your friend um, it's a ranged weapon use it for range uh, close quarter combat is a last resort it's what you do when you have to go somewhere when you have to get in close you have to clear an area right if not use your range get an optic that fits it get a longer barrel etc and set it up so that you can utilize that to the best of your ability because again the AI can dome you at distance but they're far more likely to dome you up close and personal keep that in mind of course if you're at distance and you are suppressed you can get those nice clean single headshots that's going to save you a lot of trouble a lot of aggravation um, so again keep all of that in mind and that pretty much covers it uh, again there are other nuances you can add to uh, your layout Grenades have their uses. Um, it's it's really going to be situational, um, and it's also going to be how familiar are you with the grenade mechanics, the throwing, the the angle, all that kind of stuff. Are you accurate with them? Uh, keep in mind, if you're in close quarters, if that comes bouncing back at you. Are you going to be able to get out of there quickly enough? I can guarantee you that far too often those things bounce back uh, so just again consider that risk and uh, remember that that's really a situational uh, a very uh, hit or miss uh, scenario when it comes to grenades uh, but, yeah. other than that that's pretty much gear layout again like I said if you can figure out what your energy expenditure and your ammo expenditure are on average especially uh, related to uh, your weight and uh, how much how how much time you're spending out there and what you're doing during that time that's going to help you get closer to optimizing what you bring and how much of what you bring um, but that again is something you're gonna have to determine on your own from your own individual experiences so Other than that, that's pretty much how gear works, at least uh, from my perspective. Every time you go in, if you're going in with a team, it is always a beneficial idea to uh, 
have a gear check like I just did, more or less, and be thorough with each other because there have been plenty of times where I've gone out and I just spent the last half hour talking about doing whatever mission or doing whatever it was and then we get out there, we hit the helicopter, I fly out and I'm like, oh shoot, I forgot the key for whatever. And now you can't even do that. You either can't do that mission or you gotta fumble around and hope that you get a key spawn or whatever it is. Or I forgot extra ammo or I forgot whatever. Uh, so not only does that help you guys synergize as a team what your optimal team loadout is going to be for your mission, but it's also going to make sure you don't forget anything because this game is a time commitment. Nobody wants to hear this, but so brutal, just keep that in mind. Like I'm surprised I'm still alive. So uh, that's my uh, my uh, go over on uh, gear setup Nobody and uh, pre-missions checks. Uh, and that's how we do it.